I remember talking to these two these two girls and and you know I was trying to holler at one and she was like, "Oh, we saw you the other day. We thought you were gay." And I was like, "What?" What's good, everybody? Welcome to Noteworthy. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Without further ado, let's hop into this video. All right, back to Tanzania. Got sidetracked by Turkish racism. <laughs> um, so you land in Tanzania, your feet hit the ground, <laughs> the ancestors are all in your bones. <laughs> <laughs> and they're throwing rose petals at you. Right. Did that happen? Fucks no. <laughs> it was a regular ass airport. Very nice airport. I like I like um Tanzania's uh, Dar es Salaam's airport. It's really nice. Um, is this a? Can you give me give us a brief description? Like a couple of things I want to know. Is this a majority Muslim country? Are they particularly conservative? And can you describe the phenotype of the people? Okay. Um, Zanzibar is, is dominantly uh, Muslim. The mainland, Dar es Salaam especially, is, is a mixture. You'll see some Muslim people, you'll see some Christian. They pretty much live in harmony. Um, they, uh, you said that, the, what do you say before the phenotype? I don't even know, just give us a description okay. and then what the city was like and all okay. that type of stuff. Um, um, oh, you said were people conservative? Um, very conservative, very conservative. I, man, Africa in general is very conservative. People don't understand. Um, you know, some I know people like to take aspects of African culture, and you know, Oshun is big now, and they try to blend it with Western mentality and feminism and things like that. But if you take that over there, for the most part, people are like, what are you doing? Like. Like it's you know, I think of what Nilly Fuller said about um, the word conservative. He's like you know, this in a very practical sense. Like, well, what does this word mean? You have the root word which is conserve. So the idea is that we want to conserve and maintain these principles that have set the president for us, set president for our society. We understand that the, without these things, we probably wouldn't have the society. So we're going to be a little more stern in preserving it as opposed to just kind of being more, you know, loose with things, which both have, have their pros and cons, obviously, but Africa in general is very conservative, very pro-family, very pro-life. Um, not to say that the option to have abortion doesn't exist, but like everything is centered around having a family in, in, in most of these places. East Africa is a little different than West Africa. But nonetheless, still conservative. Um, phenotype, um, I'll say an average guy, a little shorter than me, maybe like 5'11". Um, dark skin, but you'll see people around like, like our complexion. Um, I think that um, the, African, uh, the Arab influence kind of influenced um, or the African, African, uh, I mean, what I'm saying, Arab genetics kind of like mixed in a little bit more in East Africa than it did in West Africa, even though you have like the Torig and the Fulani in, in, in West Africa. They're very distinct tribes though, but you can just see that in some of the people, oh, okay, you're mixed with a little something else, but you know, still black, um, even in places like Rwanda. But um, yeah, nothing. Uh, very different from Senegal for sure. Um, yeah, that's what I'll say about the phenotype. How were people, uh, how were people dressed? Um, pretty conservative. You're not going to really see, um, like women in like short shorts or like dress, especially cer certain areas is like a no, no. So no hot girl summer again. We're not gonna see. Nah, nah. You're not gonna see that. Maybe at a resort or or like you know. But just walking the street. Like I remember, I had like um some like Muay Thai shorts. Um, and sometimes I just casually wear that like with like a shirt or whatever, just cause I'm you know it's hot. And Muay Thai shorts are more sh a, sh a little shorter than 
the original Hoochie Daddy. Exactly. Yes, yes. I started the trend before everybody else. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but, nah, but, like, people look at me funny for that. They're like, why are you wearing shorts so short? You know what I mean? Not knowing, oh, these are boxing shorts. But um, I remember talking to these two, these two girls and, and, you know, I was trying to holler at one. And she was like, oh, we saw you the other day. We thought you were gay. And I was like, what? I was like, how? She was like, well, we saw the shorts and we were like, we weren't sure. She was like, I was so happy when you actually talked to me, like to like, in that kind of way. He's like, oh, she was like, thank God. But like, but you know, that's because they're, they're so conservative. They're not used to seeing something like that. You know, you don't see a guy walking around with their shirt off. You don't see a woman with, with a dress like up to their, maybe at a club you'll see something a little more like provocative because it's just, you know, young people, nightlife. So, you know, in that context, whatever. But just c casually as a Monday, work day, walking down the street, you're not gonna see that. And even though that the girls thought that you were gay, and I'm gonna assume that maybe some guys did too. Yeah, yeah. Nobody tried to stone you or beat you in the street. Nah, it's just, it's just like, you, you might notice somebody looking at you weird or something like that, or like, or I would say almost like they don't know what they're looking at. You know what I mean? Because you don't, I mean, is, is weird, like, African homosexuality is interesting. Because obviously in cities, it might be a little more dominant, but for the most part, these people can't really wrap their head around the concept, especially if you go somewhere like rural. Like the idea of somebody being gay is just like, what, what is that? You know, people will like accuse Africans of being homophobic. I'm like, uh, they can't really be homophobic. They don't understand the concept. Cause it's just not like, like, wait, uh, a guy did what? Like, but no, your penis is meant to go in a vagina. Like that's their general understanding of sex. You know what I mean? So it's not, again, in the cities, they're a little more familiar with it, but um, still, it is, it's nothing like you, what you see in America. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, you know, your experience as a black American in Tanzania. How did the people relate to you and like what kind of things were going on? Um, people are very friendly in Tanzania. Like you could say hi to anybody. You can ask anybody for help, for directions. Um, so that's my general experience. Again, similar to Senegal, they knew I was American, but I can't like speak to any like stark contrast in like behavior like, oh, he's American, don't serve him or he's American or he's American, kiss up to him. It was this, uh, um, people, I will say this, people like they, 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 they did want to interact with me a little bit more because they never met um, Americans. Like I remember being on, um, there's this beach in um, Masaki, which is like the like one of the richer areas or the richest part of Dar es Salaam, um, called Coco Beach. I was just like I was I was walking along the beach. Um, I was practicing a little martial arts, and um, this guy came up to me. He was working in one of the restaurants on the beach, and you know he you know he was trying to convince me to come to you know eat there, but it turned into a conversation. His English wasn't too bad. Or it, it, it was good more than it was bad. But, you know, yeah, but we, we were able to really have a you know, pretty good conversation. And, and he just was so enthused to talk to me because it's like I never really met an American, you know. So this everything I want to know about just outside of this town that I'm from, I want, you can probably like, you know, you know have, give me some insight on. So we talked for a bit and then as I'm walking with him, this other guy, and like there's a few people like crowding around, like, oh wow, they're speaking English. Cause though uh, out of all the Western languages that are spoken, English is probably the most dominant. A lot of people there don't speak English. Um, it's mostly Swahili. So uh, people are like, oh, they're speaking English. And then this other kid came around the same age as him. They were like young guys, like early 20s, um, who spoke English very well. He was like, oh, I get to, I, he was like, he was like, thank you, I get to exercise my English. I usually don't get to speak English with people. So me and this cat hung out and talked for hours, you know? 
And, you know, he's telling me about just the city, places to go, what it's like. You know, he's asking me questions about America. Um, and he was, he was like, uh, he was like, but he, he emphasized too, he was like, yo, it was a big deal that, I'm, that I can speak English. Like, they were, they were, they were, cause they were crowding around us and he was just like, yeah, they don't see this a lot. So that is what I experienced as American, but not anything that felt like a, like a privilege or, or a disadvantage or like somebody's trying to take, you know, do me grimy or whatever, do me dirty. Um, none of that. And how was, how was the city, like, was, like, how would you describe the city? Is it, is it old world? Is it modern? A little bit of both. Um, again, you know, the infrastructure isn't like what it is in, in America. So, you know, you can see dirt roads, certain places. Um, but that's really more of like, I think when you get into certain neighborhoods, like if you're trying to drive to somebody's house, it'll be like a bumpy dirt road. But like the main streets are all paved. Um, a lot of cars, a lot of traffic. Um, you got the, the three forms of transportation is car, um, uh, bajaji, uh, which is like, a it's like one of those square motor tricycles with the, like, it has like a covering over it and you could just kind of like sit in the back and somebody's driving the front. Um, and then, uh, what we, what, what we call Boulder Boulder, which is like a, it's like a motorcycle and you just like get on the back. Sometimes they'd be having like three, four people on there and it's driving, um, driving like is nothing, finessing it, like making sharp turns and all that. Like, you know, they just, they just know how to adapt. Um, but it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's definitely a city, you know, it's not like New York where you could get a chopped cheese like four in the morning, but like, um, you know. So like things close pretty early, like maybe around like, I think around maybe nine-ish, everything's pretty much shut down. Maybe you could find a little restaurant here and there, but things shut down pretty early, so you gotta be aware of that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely very much a city, very much a city, city vibe in Dar es Salaam. Peace, this is Dr. Nancy, and you are watching Noteworthy TV.